Jai Hind and welcome you all. I am Professor Devendra Sikh taking the course on machine design and this is our fifth lecture in this module and the last lecture we have discussed about the stress strain diagrams of various materials and comparison on the basis of the carbon content we have compared the high carbon steel, low carbon steel and medium carbon steel. We have also compared the stress strain diagram for the plastic material, brittle materials and the ductile materials etc. Et Here today we are going to discuss the points. Uh, we will start with the simple stress strain uh, diagram for mild steel. Then we will come to the material properties. Then we will discuss the various types of the loads we come across during our analysis and design and then various modes of failure under static load. Then uh, we will discuss if uh, the theories of failure if time permits. So what is simple stress strain diagram for the mild steel? So this is uh, the specific stress strain diagram for the mild steel. So here it is sigma that is the stress and this is the strain. This is this point, this is this is a single point in case of the mild steel which where the three points coincides the elastic proportionality limit, elastic limit and the upper yield point and then the next point here this is the just below the upper yield point then this is the lower yield point then this region is the strain hardening and with the molecular rearrangement, atomic rearrangement uh, reorientation takes place and material or mild steel will regain its uh, resistance power against the deforming load and this is again start rising the curve, stress strain diagram will start rising and it will reaches to the ultimate point, the most, uh, the, the highest point and corresponding this, this is called the ultimate point and tension and after that the plastic flow will start and knacking will take place and this is the fracture point right and the actual curve actually this is the true stress strain curve for this material up to the fracture point. So the points various points that we have discussed in the last lecture Y stands for the upper yield point or uh, upper yield point in tension and Y L uh, represents the lower yield point and uh, then this is u is the ultimate point and f is the fracture point. So this is the specific uh, stress strain diagram for the mild steel. A general stress strain diagram for the ductile material we have discussed in the last lecture that is a simple like this. This is a general curve uh, for any ductile material. Now the material properties, so material properties primarily we can classify in three categories, the mechanical properties, physical properties and the chemical properties. So we should come to this chemical properties which are uh, the properties which indicates the chemical reaction and like toxic, toxicity, flammable, flammability or corrosion, uh, resistance or uh, whether the material is uh, oxidized, uh, uh, oxidation uh, prone or it offers some uh, resistance against oxidation. So this is this all this kind of the properties are uh, uh, will be considered or will come into this uh, chemical properties, physical properties which signify the physical state of material that are those are the physical properties and the mechanical properties which are of our interest here mechanical properties are the uh, are of our interest. So these we will discuss few important mechanical properties and physical properties and chemical properties in the in this lecture. So one we have chemical as far as my chemical properties is concerned and the last lecture we have discussed about the uh, selection of material for the impeller of a, uh, of a uh, scientific pump in a sugar industry as sugar cane juice is acidic in nature. So we have to select non ferrous material to avoid the corrosion otherwise it will be it will dissolve 
the uh, impeller uh, in the uh, sugar cane juice after some time. So, uh, these are the significance of the properties a designer consider when selects a material for a particular application. So, mechanical properties like strength, ductility, malleability, resilience, toughness, hardness, elasticity, etc. These are few important uh, mechanical properties uh, designer come across during his selection of material and analysis. Uh, then physical properties like density, thermal conductivity, electric conductivity, melting point, viscosity, surface tension, etc. Then chemical properties are like radioactivity is a chemical property, yes, acidity or uh, alkanity, chemical composition defines or in fact chemical composition uh, uh, affects the chemical properties, atomic bonding affects the chemical properties. So, what type of the bond is there that that affects some property that is why that is that is affected affect resulted in the properties of the chemical properties of atomic bond ki wai se jo strength mil rahi hai this is this we can consider usko hum chemical properties mein consider kar sakte hain corrosion resistance is an important property similarly here we can use the corrosion resistance and the wear resistance as a mechanical property in, in, in this category in the mechanical property. So, strength as far as strength is concerned. So, we have uh, three we will discuss later and uh, the next in, in the uh, coming forthcoming lectures. So, strength first we have discussed we have discuss this is SYT that is yield point intensity or yield strength. Then second strength we have discussed that is ultimate point intensity or the ultimate tensile strength. Then strength we consider this is Sandiaran's strength and similarly corrosion resistance or wear resistance. So, we, we consider uh, fourth one is the wear strength if we, 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 we consider it as a strength the resistance of material to resist against uh, scratches or, or, or against wear that may be considered. But primarily these are the three we will consider as a strength. So, SYT is the maximum stress which can be induced in the material up to the yield point and SUT is the ultimate tensile point or ultimate tensile uh, strength. Uh, so, this is the maximum stress which we can induce in the material up to the ultimate, uh, ultimate strength. And as E, this is endurance strength we will uh, discuss in detail. Uh, this is the maximum rest, uh, maximum completely reversible stress induced in the material so that we can get the infinite life of the, that material. Means the, the, the component you design survive uh, for 10 to power 7 complete reversals or more than that. So, these are the strength. Ductility, ductility is uh, the property uh, by virtue of which a material can be stressed into the thin wires. So, this is called the ductility. So, copper, aluminum, these are having uh, good ductility. Steel is also having a good ductility. Malleability is the ability of a material. Uh, to convert in the seat. Agar kisi material ko thoka jaya aur usko hum ek seat ke form mein bina crack huye convert kar paaye. So, that is a good malleable material. All the property is called the malleability. Resilience. Resilience is the energy the material can store in it up to the elastic point. So, um, if we go back in our uh, in, in this uh, if we uh, go back so if we go back this is the elastic point so up to the up to the elastic point the area under this stress strain curve, in fact the strain energy, strain energy is half sigma into epsilon. Uh, all of you know you have learned this strain energy 
uh, in, in your previous course on the strength of material. So, this is the area, this is resilience. If it is more, if it is more, then you can induce more stress and as soon as you remove the deforming load, the material will be able to regain its original shape. So, this property will be useful uh, to the material, material you select for the spring. A spring may deformation chahiye hume or deformation ke baad jaise usko deforming force hatate hain, usse compressive or tensile force hatate hain. So, a spring apni original position mein aajana chahiye. So, resilience is a property which you can consider a critical property for the material which should be used for the uh, spring. Next, next property is the toughness. So, toughness is toughness is the energy stored by the material up to the fracture point. So, the complete area, complete area before fracture, before fracture, this is called the toughness. This is called the toughness the area. So, as uh, uh, this toughness may be transverse toughness, may be torsional toughness, uh, may be considered or may be understood, may be perceived like a rigidity. So, the material should be tough for those materials which is having a critical application. Uh, we can think of the uh, soft, we can think of a pressure vessel which is subjected to the pressure. So, the material which should be able to bear the maximum possible uh, stress without fracture. If fracture uh, takes place in a pressurized vessel, it can cause a very heavy loss. So, toughness is the energy which is absorbed by the material before fracture. This is toughness. So, these are important properties. Uh, and now, the next property is the hardness. Sometimes and the tools, cutting tools we need to have, uh, sometimes we need to have some surfaces which should have good wear resistance. So, hardness is the property, hardness is the important property. So, hardness is the ability of material to resist against the, against the scratches or indentation. So, this is called hardness and the application, what kind of, you know, what where you will find the application of this property. In bearings, the surfaces should be hard where, when we consider if they are bearing, what is the utility of bearing? Bearing ka kaam kya hai? Bearing a kaisa mechanical element hai jo load support karta or relative motion wale parts mein supporting member ki tarah istemal karta hai and it is used to support the load as well as to reduce the friction and if friction is the important part to along with the, the to take up the load so the surfaces must have the sufficient hardness so this is the property we consider in the races of the uh, bearings and the surfaces of the balls of the ball bearings or so this is an important property there uh, and in case of the cutting tools, so if we want to cut something, so we can only cut the softer thing with uh, then the tool which is having the hardness more than that what you want to cut. Aap jis chiz ko kaatna chaate hain, to usse usi chiz se kaata ja sakta jo kaatne wali chiz se hard ho. So in 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 case of the machining, the material for the cutting tools should have should have sufficient hardness as well as toughness. Then elasticity, this is another uh, important property. Uh, as we go and as we move ahead and we will discuss various types of the modes of the failure. So, we never want to get a permanent deformation in a component which we uh, a designer design. If I want to, if if I design a soft, agar maine ek soft design design kiye, so uspe load lagne ke baad, 
uh, deformation is there, but I will never permit the, uh, I, I will not uh, like to have this shaft to deform up to the point where it will be under, where it will be subject to plastic deformation. Agar plastic deformation ho jayega shaft ka to ye wapis apni shape mein nahi aa paayegi aur next cycle ke liye it will not be able to perform the function with the desired efficiency or with the desired effect. So, elasticity in the material is also an important, prop important property from the designing point of view. Similarly, similarly, there are physical properties like density, we, we want to have a, a transportable material, so materials should be having a low density, so that mass per unit volume should be low, so we will consider the density. Sometimes we need to uh, dissipate the heat as soon as possible or all the heat should flow throughout through through the component we design so thermal conductivity should be good similarly if you want to flow a current and some so electric conductivity should be high or if you want to insulate it so it should be a good insulator uh, melting point if as for example we want to we want to make some product through uh, the casting so the melting point should be uh, low, uh, but on the other side, if we are designing something which is subjected to the high temperature and we do not want to get it melt or get not uh, get not affected by the high temperature, so melting points in that case must be high. So, on the basis the designer will select the material, what is the melting point of it uh, and viscosity. Uh, viscosity is another physical property. Uh, if is there are a number of applications where we come across uh, like in lubrication. So, viscosity plays a very important role in case of the lubrication. So, the flow uh, should be viscous or non-viscous, uh, it should offer the resistance to flow or it should make a film. Uh, for example, in the journal bearings, so we need to form a uh, film between journal and the bearing. So, if viscosity is very low, then it will be very difficult to form a film and to reduce the friction or to avoid the metal to metal uh, contact and uh, journal bearing. So, this will be an important property in case of the journal bearing. Surface tension is another physical property which you can find applications um, uh, and in number of cases and capillary action, etc. Then uh, these, these are the radioactivity. So, this is uh, uh, something which we uh, use in uh, uh, our uh, nuclear plants, then acidity is another issue, if uh, some, something is acidic, then the designer will select the example we have discussed earlier, alkalinity. Uh, alkalinity. So, uh, the material like, uh, I can, uh, I I'd like to give an example of the water for a boiler. Uh, to generate a steam, we use uh, a simple water. So, we consider, we, uh, we, we, we try to maintain the pH value. So, it should not uh, the acidic nor alkaline, alkaline. So, if it is more alkaline than, than the tubes of the, uh, of the water tube boiler may get a scaling and this thermal or heat transfer it will be affected and the rate of steam generation will be affected only due to this chemical property alkanity. And the chemical composition and atomic, bond, atomic bonding and corrosion resistance. Corrosion resistance we have discussed earlier in case of uh, or in a, with, with the example of uh, the impeller of centrifugal pump in the sugar cane, uh, sugar industry uh, for, uh, to pump the sugar cane juice. So, these are the chemical properties, these are the physical properties, uh, some few properties I have discussed here and the mechanical properties I have discussed. All these properties a designer has to consider when he or uh, she is to make a appropriate selection for particular design. So, material, prop material selection is a critical step to make your design cost effective and popular to, 
to to make it popular and uh, efficient and uh, effective so there are number of properties are available a designer has to consider as uh, as for uh, as per the application whenever the application requires some more properties uh, we consider during the design uh, for the selection of materials so in the design there are various types of the load and primarily the mechanical mechanical loads can be divided in two groups first is a static load second one is uh, the dynamic load so what is a static load a static load is that load which does not change in its direction or it in its magnitude it neither change its direction nor magnitude with respect to time that is called the static load and a dynamic load which may change its direction or it may change its magnitude with respect to time is called the dynamic load uh, i am discussing here just the basic definition of static load and dynamic load when we will design the components and we will discuss in detail what is the meaning of the static load and dynamic load so what is static load so as far as uh, uh, that load time curve this is the static load so this is the pickup time itne samay mein is the maximum magnitude ko itne samay mein ye maximum magnitude and then it will remain same it remains it it comes constant with respect to time time changes but there is no variation in the magnitude of the force and if it is a positive direction for the load it remains positive it is not moving on the negative direction so this is in the category of the static load next is the load time diagram for the dynamic load here load is in positive it is not going on the other side it may go uh, in the other side also but it is varying the magnitude for at this time this is the magnitude 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 so as time changes the magnitude of the load varies so this is considered as a dynamic load and dynamic load may be it it may have some constant values so it's for example if i consider this it will be come across us when we discuss uh, the design uh, against the fluctuating load so if it is there then suppose this is sigma and this is time and it is having this is sigma or uh, this is sigma this is also sigma sigma a this is also sigma a having the equal value but this is in the positive direction and this is in the negative direction this is tensile in nature this is tensile in nature and for this duration this will be uh, compressive in nature this this is compressive in nature so this is also considered as a dynamic load so i think it is clear what is a static load and what is a dynamic load so a static load which is having a constant value with respect to time uh, accept uh, some time what is which, that is a pick up time of the load you place jo aap baat ko tarajju pe rakhte hain jitne samay mein tarajju pe rakha gaya usne effect diya that is a pick up time of or uh, then it will be a constant that is static load and if there is any kind of variation any kind of variation whether in magnitude or in the direction with respect to time that is called the dynamic load so and after that this mechanical load we can classify as uh, a static load or dynamic load on the basis of the effect it if it creates the tension then it is considered as a tensile load if it creates the compression contraction in any uh, object or in any material uh, when it is applied and compression is there then this is called the compressive load and if it is 
in the direction of tangential then this is called the tangential load and then if it creates some bending so this is called bending load and if torque then this is called the torsional load so this is this is tensile load if this is a member if this is a member it is subjected to this is this is compressive load and if this is a block which is fixed here and tangentially I apply some load here this is tangential load and if this is a block and I apply some bending moment. So, these bending moments we consider as a bending load or here we have a beam we have a beam which is a simply supported beam and it this is this. So, this is again subjected to the subjected to uh, the bending right it will bend it will bend like this it will bend like this right this is elastic curve then this if this is a soft circular in section and it is subjected to a torque then this torque is called the torsional moment. So, for today's lecture uh, this is uh, this is all and uh, tomorrow we will discuss about the uh, the e effect of the centric load uh, further we will continue with the types of the load in the next lecture thank you thank you very much.